Okay, so in this video, we're going to look at an effective way of preventing form spam. So any automated messages that are um, received as part of a form based on your website. Um, and personally, I've used this and it's been extremely effective. Uh, for example, going to perhaps 100 uh, emails, automated emails a day via a contact form to probably not even one a week. So this could still let uh, spam through. Depending on how your site is being targeted, um, this will determine obviously how effective it is. But um, it's such a simple change um, in whatever language you're working in that uh, is worth giving it a go. So I'm working in PHP. I'm going to demonstrate the functionality of this and how to prevent uh, this this kind of form spam with PHP, but whatever language you're working with, it doesn't matter. The theory is the same, and it's equally as easy to implement uh, with any web-based technologies. So here you can see we have a contact form, relatively straightforward. We have the ability to enter a name, email address, and a query. And uh, you can see on the right, I've just got my element inspector open. And I can just have a look at, at what we have in the in the markup because we're going to make some sort of fundamental changes to the markup, which don't affect the user, um, but do actually affect automated submission of this form. So we're going to consider uh, making this change. We're going to give this a little test out. So at the moment, what's going to happen is I can go ahead and enter a name, an email address, and a query. And by hitting send, this basically pulls us over to contact.php, detects that these fields are available, have been submitted to us, and then just outputs the text, sends us an email. We don't actually have any functionality working in this instance. Now let's just take a look at the code. Um, here we can see that we've basically got a form. Um, three fields, so uh, for a name, email, and a text area for the query, and a submit button. So this is how um, a bot would see your code, and it would pick up on the fact that you had three input fields, uh, essentially. Obviously, text area isn't an input element, but it's still um, you know, a, an element that you would input data into. And then it would go ahead, fill these in with a value, so something like value equals uh, bot, or whatever they, uh, the value that's input. It would do the same for the other two, and then it would submit this form. Now, there's a small uh, workaround to um, your form, adding a little bit more markup to protect against this. So let's go ahead and do this. So if we think carefully about this, your the, the bot filling out the form isn't probably isn't half as intelligent as you think it is. So if we were to go ahead and introduce another input here, that bot would probably automatically fill that in. So let's go ahead and just introduce a new form field here. Uh, this is just going to be the type of text. And we'll give this a name, and let's just say uh, phone, for example. Or we could just say something like title. So uh, what's going to happen now is we've introduced a new form onto our page, and when we refresh, we can see that that form is, in fact, um, on in within our field set. Now, the reason for this is that when uh, a, a bot sort of hits your uh, site, it's going to fill this in, but what we can do is we know that we don't want this to be filled in, it's not useful to us, so we can actually detect if it has been filled in, and if it has been filled in, we can go ahead and kill our page or something like that. So let's go ahead and first of all hide this. Now in my in my style sheet I have a, a hidden class which basically has display none and visibility hidden. Um, I'm using both properties purely for the fact that screen readers might read this content out if it still has if it has display none. So using both um, just ensures that the majority at least of screen readers uh, for visually impaired users won't read this field out because that would be detrimental to their experience of using your site. They might think that, you know, having to fill out this field is is necessary. So um, in that case, we want to make sure it's definitely hidden. Um, there might be some situations where screen readers will read this out, um, but, you know, the research can be done to, to prevent this. Go ahead and, and check which screen readers will or won't read this out, or just test it yourself. So um, we can apply the hidden class to this element and let's jump back over to our actual page and refresh you see that that's gone so now what we can do is we can go ahead and fill the um, the query or the form out 
hit send and it still sends us an email. Now we'll go ahead and just introduce a little bit more code into our contact.php page. Now um, basically all this code does is it checks if the name, email and query have been set. So the required fields have been set and then it goes ahead and echoes this send us an email string. Now what we want to do is we want to introduce another check in here and again whichever language you're working with it doesn't matter. Uh, we want to introduce another uh, check to basically just say if this form field that we don't want to be filled in is set, so title, and we also want to check if it's not empty, so basically has this field been filled in? If it has then in my case I'm going to use the php die function which will basically kill the page and it won't allow any further um, any further execution if you like or, or uh, anything past this to be run. So now what we do is we can still go ahead as a, as a sort of legitimate user, submit the details that we need to submit and hit send. However, if I was a bot, let's go ahead and just modify this and show you what happens. So in here, I'm going to go ahead and add an attribute and this is going to be value and I'm just going to add say Mr. So if this field has been filled out um, by looking at the source, so bot by, by uh, bot looking at the source. Uh, when we hit send, nothing happens. So what's happened now is a bot has come along, seen these four fields, filled out all, all four fields, but we as developers know that that field shouldn't have been filled out and therefore we can just kill the page. So what we've now done is, um, that is it. We, we've implemented a simple solution to basically kill a page if a, if a hidden field has been filled out which obviously we don't require and that is it um, as I said I've used this and it's been extremely effective so you know if you are suffering with the same problem go ahead and implement it and uh, hopefully it will be as effective